Hey, good morning. Yes, it is. It's January 8th on a Monday. Ready to start the week? I'm kind of, uh, but. So I first wanted to go over how many comments I got. I didn't expect that many comments, guys, which is great, you know. That lets me know that people are actually reading or, or watching what I'm talking about and listening. Because um, I find that most people these days haven't got the attention span of an ant. So to sit and watch something for half an hour, 45 minutes, you're pushing your luck after like 30 seconds. Now, before one of you yin yangs go out and try to find out what the attention span on an ant is, I'm using that as a hyperbole. I think that's the right word. I don't know what the attention span of an ant is. I could care less, right? But anywho, welcome back. Uh, so I thought we'd go over the questions and we'll see where my mind wanders off to with those. All right, stay tuned. So welcome back. Let's see if we can tackle some of these comments you guys left. All right. So the one thing I will have to say with you guys that are doing auto mechanics, you know, a simple oil change is not simple anymore. And trying to do anything for maintenance on the newer vehicles is crazy. You know, and... It, a lot of times people don't understand how much time it actually takes unless they've done it, right? And then the key is you got to have the right tools. There's a lot of specialty tools out there that are given to just, you know, Ford, GM, Dodge, whatever, mechanics, to access, you know, air cabin filters to, you know, I've got a... A 2022, no, a 2021 Ford F-150, the FX4s. And Claude is running the 2019 F-150 XL, I think it is. And even from the 19 to the 21, there's a lot more features that were added, right? But the time it takes to just do a simple maintenance on the truck. See, I don't take my vehicle back to the dealership or to an auto mechanic to get the oil changed on it, you know, serviced and this and that. And there's a reason behind it. It's because my truck is a work truck, you know, and part of you know, running a shop and having equipment is staying on top of the equipment and doing as much that you can yourself is paramount. You know, you can't hire someone out. Now, don't get me wrong. If it's something that it's not running right, forget it. The only blessing in disguise I have is my son is a Ford mechanic. So... If need be, he could bring out his computer and plug it in his laptop and figure out what the problem is quickly. But most people don't have that option. They don't have a son that is a Ford mechanic, right? That has specialty tools. And he was telling me, you know, that he's doing... Girls. He's he's been working on a recall on the seven threes. I think he said of the upper pan gasket oil pan gasket and how much work it is just to get to it just to get to it 
so you know most of the stuff that we ever had the older stuff oil pan gaskets were right there you, know, you drop the oil pan drain the oil drop the oil pan and then put your gasket or a sealant of some kind and tighten your back up easy peasy not now no not now you got to have so many tools the right tools boy i understand where you guys are coming from where you can't just call it a simple oil change because if you're doing a service on a vehicle are you doing a service or are you doing just a oil change see in my eyes a service is when you go from front to back and you aren't going to be able to catch everything all the time but most good mechanics have got this you know check the ball joints check the brakes route rotors you know drive lines is there anything that looks out of place the grounding straps you know transmission leaks rear end is it got enough oil in it differentials the, the list goes on and on for you guys that are doing auto you know for trucks and stuff where it's kind of limited for us with the lawnmowers when we start getting into the compacts that's where it starts getting a little bit more in depth because there's more things that can go wrong right so i hear you on that one so i i would think you'd have to differentiate you know a simple oil change to a service and what's spelled out in the service and what's spelled out in an oil change if you want a service that we're going to check everything especially if you're in an inspection station it does you know inspections on vehicles in new york you have to have a new york state inspection valid every year on your vehicle it has to pass the emissions and a bunch of other stuff you know check engine lights And if a shop like that lets go of a machine that had bad ball joints and it gets in an accident the following day and it's got faulty ball joints and it was in your shop, you're going to start being asked a lot of questions. And in that sense, you have to charge more, guys. That's all there is to it, you know. And what I can tell you is less and less and less people are working on their own stuff because you just can't do it, not the newer things, right? So that brings us to one that you guys all touched on, and that was, you know, that you can order parts online and have it delivered to your house or order a, uh, a tool like you, Amos, and have it be 40 bucks cheaper online delivered right to your front door instead of getting it locally and what I can tell you about the ones that you're finding online okay a lot of times those are open box and what is open box open box is somebody that bought it maybe they gifted it to somebody for Christmas and it came back and it got sold as an open box. Now, there might be nothing wrong with it. And most of your sellers will test these. You know, like, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar. If you do a YouTube search, you know, just do the Amazon crates or the, the Amazon pallets. You know, you'll find that like Walmart, Amazon, all these other ones will take all their returns and put them on a pallet shrink wrap them because they'll try discounting them at the store first to see if anybody bites and if they don't they wrap them up and ship them out to a, a main holding area where a lot of times they're sold by the pallet and you have these guys that do pallets now he may get a whole pallet of tools you know that are open box returns and 
he or she will go through and test them real quick, make sure that they're all working. And technically, they can still sell them as new because they are new, but you don't know why they got brought back. But most cases, what I'm seeing nowadays, and you didn't hear it from me, is a lot of people are taking and buying something with their credit card and then wanting cash back to go do something else with it. And that's a whole nother video. The other thing is, is the guys selling online don't have the overhead. That was one of the key things that helped me out immensely when I was selling a lot of parts online was I didn't have to per se pay for a building to house all these parts. I had all these warehouses at my fingertips. And they were all willing to work with me. And, you know, we did everything from individuals that were working on their own stuff at home to school systems that were ordering big orders twice a year to a lot of small engine repair shops that would call and put together an order of what they wanted and have it sent to them. And why would they go through us, right? Because it was cheaper. Now, if you watched earlier videos, you'll find out that we rose high enough so that when it came to pricing with most of them, we were at top level. High as we could get. We were selling enough volume, enough dollars for those companies that we got the highest discounted rate for the parts. And a lot of times, I work deals with them, certain ones, that no matter how big the order was, if it was over a certain amount, it was free. And then for the other ones, it was a straight up $12, $14 fee. I didn't have <coughs> girls. I didn't have places that I was buying parts that charged actual freight. That was the key. So I could get, I mean, like the school systems, five, $6,000 orders. And I would compile it all together and I would have to do the, the net and 30, net and 60, and have that whole order drop shipped. And if I couldn't get them all from one warehouse, I split it up. And if, I, if the school system wanted OEM Briggs and OEM, um, anyways, I would ship just the OEMs from my OEM distributor and the aftermarkets from my aftermarket, and they would arrive about the same time. And I'd have them put on the order, you know, if they had to have a certain PO, that PO beyond the tag, the shipping label, so that the, my customer knew that that was their PO, right? So that's how I was able to do it cheaper, and that's how the guys that are still there, to a certain extent, are doing it. Is they don't have the overhead. They don't have the building or the expense of, you know, rent, lease, you know, especially if you're talking storage with type warehousing. Uh, most of them don't have a lot of employees. A lot of them are one man bands. They're just, you know, buying and selling. Whereas if you go to your local store they may be sitting on that tool for four months and it's taking up shelf space before it finally sells so that's why a lot of times ones online can sell it to you so much cheaper is they don't have the overhead which it is what it is right you say i buy a lot of stuff online Bob buys a lot of stuff for mechanical stuff online so that brings me to my final two points, and that is 
a number of you guys have mentioned that trying to get a local business to come out and do work for you is is very hard. And in my area, anyways, the ones that are left, it may be not so much that you know they can't get to you or they don't want to get to you as they have a, a list that they're trying to get through and you're on that list right and of course when you're broke down or you ask to broke you want it fixed right so you were saying most of you like we're saying that you just went ahead and you, and you watched a video or you read something and you learned how to fix it yourself. Now, I know with us, we represent a small, classified as a small business in our area and we do, you know, everything from lawnmowers up to farm tractors. And we don't turn away work. Actually, right now we could use the work. But what I'm finding in this economy these days is that people are trying to find ways to save money. See, I've always equated time is money, right? If you have more time, because you have less money to spend, you're gonna spend that time working on your lawnmower, right? Doing the service on it. But now if you have money that can buy you time, you pay somebody else to do the work on your lawnmower, and that frees up more time for you, right? So that's why I've always said money is time. That either you're gonna have to learn how to do it or you're going to have to pay somebody to do it one or the other so that brings us into you know the YouTubers that are showing people how to do stuff and we've had similar for years whether it's you know the old books on trucks breakdowns on how to fix it step by step you know we order shop manuals on tractors that are new to us you know and we keep them um, handy so if we have another one come in we pull out the shop manual on it and figure out how everything ticks on it and see what's going on with it The difference is with YouTube, you can visually watch and freeze the screen while you're doing stuff. And then when you get caught up to the person that's trying to teach you, then you can restart it, continue it, and then get that much farther, stop it. Or you can watch it from one end to the other and learn something new. But when it comes to my comment that I made that some of these shop owners that are on YouTube, and I'm no different, okay, is most of them, I, I think, genuinely wanted to help people. Now, by doing so, if it provided them with a revenue stream to where they no longer had to run that shop because they didn't have to deal with people anymore. They didn't have to deal with, you know, inventory, back orders, and everything else. They had developed a niche, a new business model for them to step away from actually doing the work now to just doing how-tos. And it's not just in a small engine repair, it's in anything, any business. 
you know, it's entertainment for the most part. But the last thing I can do is fault somebody for trying to capitalize and make money off from their videos. You know, it just depends on how many followers you have and, you know, how many people watch your videos. There's a bunch of analytics that go into it. Now, I can be totally honest with you as well. Like, for the year, with YouTube, has provided me with, is right around 400 bucks, okay? And in that year, I put out over 300 videos. So, if you figure how much it costs per video, <laughs> How much I'm getting paid. Doesn't even cover a cup of coffee in the morning to do the video. So, but some of these guys and gals, you know, are, are getting 90 plus thousand viewers coming to their channel every time they upload a new video. And that's how they're making their money is they're making it twofold. One is... They're making it on the front end with advertising for, you know, YouTube puts in commercials and you get paid squat for so many thousands of views. And then the other way is sponsorships. Companies are sponsoring them to either have like, you know, Copperhead signs in the back or, you know, DeWalt or, you know, something that they're getting sponsored by a company, a certain amount, to either say something nice about a product that they have or do a whole show on just that product. What I can tell you guys is with me, I don't have any sponsors. And YouTube is not a revenue stream for me. Not yet, anyways. I can always hope I'm a capitalist, right? That you never know. It might be my way out of continuing or discontinuing the repair shop and just focusing just simply on how to's, you know. Don't know. But I can tell you right now, <laughs> it, it's not even buying me a cup of coffee in the morning. So I'm a long ways off, but I can't fault the ones that that do have the following that can afford to just step back and say, all right, we're going to close up shop and we're just simply going to do how-tos and we're not going to have customers anymore. And I think Chicka Mechanic, she had her... The building that she was in got tore down and they're trying to get the garage set up. But I think more so that you're not going to see her get back into handling a lot of customers' machines. And then you have Steve's Saloon, I think it is. Salon, Saloon. You know, just last month he announced he's all done seeing customers. He's going to simply just do family and friends and, and do the YouTube thing. A lot of people have afforded to be able to stop working. But now, you know, it's kind of like any business. When you're first starting out, and this is your own personal life too. When you're first starting out, you have nothing to lose and all to gain, right? And as you start growing and you start accumulating wealth, knowledge, what have you, now you've got something to lose, all right? And that forces you to have to keep doing X, Y, and Z and bettering yourself 
so that you don't lose what you have, but you still continue to grow, right? But in reality, everything is at risk all the time, all right? You could get hurt and lose your income, right? So a lot of these bigger YouTubers that have graduated from actual sh running a shop to just doing how-tos, that has become their business, all right? And just like their shop was, they have to physically show up and put quality work out every time. You're only as good as your last job. And that's where it gets a lot of them into trouble, I think, is that they get bigger than their britches. And they start putting out mediocre videos as long as they're getting the viewership. But the problem is going to develop is, is once you stop putting out quality videos, the attention span of that ant will waver. If you're putting out the same style videos all the time and not changing it up and the quality's not there, then you're going to lose what you have, right? Because the minute people stop coming to view your videos, there's your revenue stream is gone. And what I've seen with YouTube and with every business that I know of you know, some come and some come, go, some go, you know, that some last a couple of years and some last only four months. And some last 40 years. So on that note, you guys have a great Monday and I'll see if I can't throw together a repair video <laughs> to become famous on YouTube. Right. All right, so I'll catch you later today or possibly the first thing in the morning. All right, you guys have a great day.